Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we should start with our honorable guests. I'm going to wait a little bit because I'm going to give you just a short presentation uh, so we can enter into this topic. So the eternal question is how much time we spent in front of the mirror. So believe it or not, um, we on the Italians are the nation which men and women stand in front of the mirror on average 6.2 hours per week. More than any other nation in the world, it means. So, um, uh, we can, uh, at, uh, we all do care how do we look. And this is actually on our look, uh, is based my business with Energy Clinic. And it appears, according to statistics, that it's going to stay like that for a very long uh, time. So no one here today in this room shouldn't be surprised when uh, we know and, uh, uh, that the wellness, global wellness industry reached already 3.4 trillions. As you can see, the Statista has some uh, survey results. Uh, so we do have Italians, then Argentinians, USA, France, Czech Republic, Germany, Spain, Hong Kong, Poland, and United Kingdom. At uh, the end, among, among top 10 countries that whose uh, inhabitants like to stay in front of the mirror the most. This is actually very useful data because then you can take in consideration what kind of nations you do have listed as top uh, 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 buyers of your uh, hotel uh, services of your rooms as well. And uh, re represented, so beauty and anti-aging is the largest segment represented in this uh, global wellness industry. But as you know, diversity is the right word for the wellness these days. So you can have anything as a wellness service that comes from you know, healthy eating, weight loss, fitness, alternative medicine, preventive medicine, complementary medicine, etc., etc. Also, uh, wellness became uh, a, a lifestyle, not just the product, but the lifestyle, and especially an important part of the luxury segment, of the luxury la lifestyle. Uh, we also know that uh, the, in the context of luxury and defining wellness experiences is imperative to business models and objectives we want to achieve. So how do we define luxury and uh, what is exactly what guests are looking for? So as you see here another survey taken by JFK, Global Survey, saying that 80% uh, of women always feel like I could lose weight. This gives you a great opportunity for your future products, how to create them and how to target your market. I don't like having my, my, having my picture taken would say 60% of women, but as well 53% of men. So we can always promise them that we're going to improve their appearance, they look, make them look younger, more appealing, more attractive, which, with this, of course, you have to deliver some of your promises <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> and I worry that people judge my appearance. 59% of women are going to say that, you know, they worry about how people are going to uh, judge them if... Uh, and uh, further on, uh, the, pa the part of our body that we most like both, as you can see, is 52% of men and 69% of women worry about, is stomach. So promising a flat stomach would sell really, really good in luxury segment also. And uh, what does the modern guest want? Uh, diversity is something we are, you know, guests are always looking for, but could we please at the same time every single guest in our 
hotel and how to do that it's going to be very interesting to hear later on and as you can see in this world we do have many faces because of the business because of the family because of the some emotions so Merlin Monroe said sweetie if you are going to be two-faced at least make one of them pretty so it was always about beauty and it's always going to stay about beauty especially in the luxury segment Let's not, we did, did have here two slides showing Sophia Loren and Marilyn Monroe, but let's not forget that 43% of the men on a survey we did in Dubrovnik is going to use your wellness, luxury wellness service on average, of course. So think about what kind of programs, what kind of weight loss program you're going to offer to uh, your male population. So what does the modern guest want in their luxury wellness hotel experience and how do we address the key values that are important to them? We want to find out from our today's guests. So let's see what they have to say. We're clear. We're talking about how to sell better, uh, basically. <laughs> so that's the the panel is uh, is about. So I was wondering: is just the feeling of being part of an elite group of perch is a purchase motivator? So belonging to a five-star hotel group, does it stimulate uh, someone to buy more services and products? We do have one lady, so we're going to address her first. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation and it's been really great for meeting lots of people who I've met before and meeting new and learning from all of you here today. Thank you. Well, I think that, of course, I mean, when we talk about luxury, like everyone wants to go somewhere where they know that they will be taken care of, they will be, let's say, obviously pampered and all their needs are met. And that's very important when it comes to five-star hotels or five-star wellness centers. These are the things people are looking for. And uh, usually it's uh, a matter of if, if we know someone important or famous went there, everyone else wants to follow and everyone else wants to go to the same place because it gives you some sort of a prestige, let's say, because you've been there as well as them. So that's how I will start with we do have a representative of Maestra group and Maestra just uh, is just they do have already a very high-end five-star premises and about to finish another one so what would you say on this uh, I actually can you, can you hear me I actually wanted to add on uh, to what you were saying uh, with with our uh, Monte Molini hotel we actually took a different approach uh, we don't actually publish or say who stayed at the hotel so we in keeping our guests anonymous we give them uh, the, the right to, to a pri privacy and so they actually tend to prefer that rather than uh, connecting to a star that, that stayed at the hotel so which is kind of interesting that it's completely the opposite way so it, it can work that way as well well, no, I, I agree with you, and privacy is very, very important, yeah, and lots of the uh, VIPs are important people, they, they're always looking for privacy, because they want to have their own time, where they can do whatever they want to be without being bothered. But sometimes, let's say, in a small country like Qatar, where I live, it is... Uh, People talk about their, their experiences, so when they go somewhere and they have a great experience or a bad one, they will come back and they will talk about it. And if you are considered one of the VIPs or if you are considered very well off, then, and you talk about a destination where you've been, then everyone else wants to go there because they say, ah, oh, I went to the same place as so and so. So that's what I meant. But privacy is obviously very, very important. So being part of a group that is, you know, not exposed could be also uh, a motivator, a purchase motivator as well. Because it gives like a privacy, gives a certain exclusivity yes. as well. So if I want to be a part of a group that is, you know, a clandestine group, I would need to buy and pay extra for the hotel that is, you know, giving me the opportunity. Of course, and there's lots of hotels mm -hmm. nowadays that offering and wellness centers that offer 
uh, extra access, so a separate access for people who w don't want to be seen coming through the main gates or through the main door because uh, through the lobby, whatever. So they have access from the back, even if through the kitchen sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just that it gives them extra privacy so they can go in and out without being seen. I, I, I like the access through the kitchen because I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have an interesting case with, with our two hotels. Uh, Montemolini and Lone are actually connected uh, underground. So uh, Lone has a very large wellness and Montemolini has a small but more exclusive. Uh, it's also the size of the hotels is in the same way. Montemolini is smaller and uh, Lone is larger. So we give the opportunity for the Montemolini guests only. Their key card opens the wellness of the Montemolini Hotel as well as the Lone Hotel. So it's, it's kind of giving them the opportunity to belong to, to have extra privileges, like you just mentioned. Mike, how yeah. about Danubius Group? I Putting Danubius Group just slightly to okay. one side and giving my own personal All opinion. Right. I think being part of an elite group is a motivator initially. Like if you f fly first class mm -hmm. on a plane, you do feel a little bit superior that mm -hmm. you're not with the crowds at the back. But after that's gone, I think luxury particularly in today's world, is much more about space, being away from crowds, as you know if you've traveled here by plane and through an airport, which is um, full of crowds and stress. And I think luxury more and more will be about this space and tranquility and getting away from the crowds and mm -hmm. the everyday life. This actually brings us to my second question, because uh, it is noted that the luxury group is less focused on things and places and more actually on uh, experiences. So is that true? you find that true? I Mike? Think, mm -hmm. uh, I think there are two things. Are we mm -hmm. motivated by experiences or are we motivated by things? And mm -hmm. I think we've always been motivated by both of them. Um, what's happened in the last 20 years is a huge shift in the experiences that we choose. And if you look at my parents, what they did in the evenings to relax was they had a drink and a few cigarettes. Whereas my generation, we will be much more inclined perhaps to go to the fitness or do yoga. So what I think is happening is people generally are being much more mindful about the experiences that they choose mm -hmm. in order to live a more healthy and perhaps longer life. So for spas, that is about linking into that and providing experiences that are going to be healthy and, um, uh, and, and improve the quality of your life, and not just about the aesthetics of how you look. Yeah, because this is, uh, we experience that, I think, in Croatia, in Croatian market everyone focused so much on the hardware and you know software was completely neglected so you do have great premises the people invested millions into you know like things and less into experiences so I believe now is the right time you know to switch the other way the other way around or to take both into consideration yeah. How about, uh, let's hear uh, Istok, he is in charge into thermal spas. We know, uh, everyone knows that there is, you know, super luxury thermal spas like Monte Carlo, for example. But there are some other segments, you know, other spas don't have a luxury but could actually fit luxury segment as well. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me here. And I was actually asking myself, do I fit exactly in this round table luxury? And coming from Slovenia, and Slovenia's past, so we know each other as we are neighbors. But mm -hmm. there are so many participants from other countries, European and let's say worldwide, which might not very know, uh, might not know very well about the Slovenian past. So I have put some few ideas where we focus our strength on. And the first which comes is definitely the tradition. We have a very old tradition, European tradition, Roman tradition, as putting it on one side. Second is the knowledge, but I mean with the knowledge, the medical expertise, me medical experts who work in this field. The third one, which rounds it all up, is the nature. The fourth one is coming to approach where it comes to luxury, is the quality. 
we are all behind quality, but do we really deliver the quality what we think that somebody is needing? Then one and more and more important thing is sustainability. And the last one, I put hospitality equal experience. Rounding up all these aspects where we try to be, where we want to develop ourselves is the luxury. Mm -hmm. What I believe can be even in a not five star or six star hotels, but the experience you get from all these connected, mm -hmm. let's say, levels or developments or uh, let's say even, even knowledge that we can uh, give is, is something which I put on a, on a highest level. I have uh, added also from Travel Weekly just recently was, uh, was written the next level of, of wellness tourism is including medical programs. Actually we do this in our traditional spas, in our thermal spas already for centuries, not to say the, the, oldest, uh, the oldest document is 600 years old of proven medical uh, natural sources that have helped the, the clients at that time. But I, I think at the end of the day, health is our biggest luxury. Mm -hmm. And what we do is actually we help pe people stay healthy and help the people who are not healthy to become healthier. So I, I combine this sometimes even more than to be on a gold-plated, uh, uh, let's say, bathroom or drinking mineral water with golden leaves inside, yeah. but delivering all this, uh, what I believe is the six essential uh, elements uh, of, of the spa and the, let's say, hospitality industry makes it the luxurious uh, experience uh, that everybody wants. So sometimes I even say, maybe, maybe even a four-star hotel can do Could a better be. service and deliver a better experience yeah. And, I, and the guests come out more luxurious than if they would pay for a room for two, three, four thousand dollars. And I think there is a market for this four-star superior guest that is looking for this total health experience. Because we, Danubius, do the same uh, product as, as you. I think our challenge, and I'm sure you have the same challenge, is we've inherited uh, spa operations which are more used to delivering treatments like factory um, because guests going to our type of spas will have three to four treatments a day prescribed by a doctor. In one of our spas we're doing about 3,000 treatments a day. Um, so the challenge is how to provide that at a higher level um, and also somehow divorce ourselves from this culture of uh, a factory like delivery to providing something more personal but still giving the three to four treatments a day. When we are talking about luxury and experience, some of my friends uh, recently, let's say within a year or two, that, and they are quite comfortable with the money, told me that they rather rent an apartment via Airbnb, a luxury apartment, in order to have more experience and more privacy. So does that mean, uh, Leo, that maybe hotels are not delivering enough experience or, or enough privacy, that, that, there, that there is a higher demand actually for that? The, there's, there's definitely a rise in the Airbnb reservations and uh, they're definitely up and coming. But uh, I don't think that they will take over in terms of uh, what we do. I mean, we work, we work with many other agents and Today we found out that agent is a bad word. Facilitator is much better. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And travel is yeah. better than tourism. <laughs> <laughs> and travel is better than tourism. So uh, it really depends on their uh, personal uh, preferences and what they want to experience when they go to a destination or when they choose a place where, where they want to stay. Of course, when you're in an apartment, it's much different than when you're in a hotel, whether it is a four-star superior or a five-star. So. Um, I would go back to, you know, they're, in the, at the end of the day, they're going to do whatever it, it is that makes them happy. So the, the market that we're after in the five-star segment and positioning ourselves as the best hotel in Croatia or try to be in the top three, then we're looking for a, a, a smaller niche. Uh, but the, the four-star is definitely, I think, uh, from a business perspective, it's also a very good way to go.
If not, if, I'm, I'm, nothing is a safe bet, but it, I think it's, you get a, a larger segment of customers that, that you are after. Ram, is that a challenge as well for your company, for uh, Gates to Wellness? Well, I think that there is a market for all what we're talking about. I mean, there's a market for the five-star hotels. There's lots of people who want to go and they want to be treated with luxury and taken care of and find everything according to their need and so on. And in the same time, I think that the most important thing from my point of view is controlling expectations. So if I, if I have a client who wants to go f to, a, a, let's say, a wellness spa for detox, for weight loss, and any of that, and I know that there's a, even a three-star hotel or spa or wellness center who can provide an amazing ex uh, treatments and results, but it, maybe it's not a five-star hotel or five-star rooms, then if I uh, communicate that, to, the, to my client and then to give her the choice that maybe the rooms are not luxurious, maybe it's not, as you're saying, gold-plated and da-da-da, but you will end up with amazing treatments, they, they know what they're talking about, you will achieve your goal. And then by doing that, I, when she goes, she knows what to expect and she's happy with the results. And lots of people are willing to do, to do that, to say, no, I don't want a five star with not as good a, a treatment, but I, I would rather go to a treatment and get my goal done. So it depends on what are you after, really. Are you there for a holiday and you want to be treated well and taken care of in a luxury five star hotel? Or are you going with your family and you want to spend time in an apartment where you have more freedom to do whatever you want? Or you're going for a specific goal, which is treatment and getting something done in a, a period of time. This is what uh, Istak was talking about as well, right? Yeah, yeah. That's and by the way, I just booked Airbnb for Berlin. Uh, okay. <laughs> but not uh, because I would like to spend more time in a spa, but the prices during the ITB are crazy in the hotels. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Sorry, just to chirp in. Um, we're not so affected by Airbnb, and I don't think you are either. <laughs> Mm -hmm. because they don't have the natural resources yeah. that we have. They don't have the wonderful thermal water, and they don't also offer the medical mm -hmm. uh, treatments and rehabilitation treatments that we have. So we haven't been so affected. But I'm sure that there are some guests that don't want to go to a hotel. They would prefer to be on their own in a self-contained mm -hmm. apartment, and I think we have to accept that for the future. But if hotels are clever, they will put something <laughs> in there to, to get those sure. guests to go there. Sure, yeah. I mean, we don't like the people who don't go to hotels. But <laughs> <laughs> There's a the saying own. that if you want to charge like a luxury prices, you have to offer something that others cannot. So what is Maestra offering that others are not in Croatia? At, at the beginning, uh, I think you mentioned uh, the importance of the, the soft aspect, the people, the mm -hmm. human aspect. And I, I strongly believe that, you know, regardless of what the hotel is like or if you're going somewhere for a treatment or in any business, if the person that you have, and now I, Irena, I'm saving you from asking the question, training is very important. <laughs> <laughs> so really the, the person that is standing in front of you really has to know his or her, uh, has to be an expert in what they're doing. And at the same time, they have to be uh, a people's person. They have to read you so when you arrive that you feel you know, wow, this person knows exactly what I need. Or yes, this is the treatment I want to try. So it's, it's very tricky because, you know, the, the, when, when, when somebody's staying at a luxurious hotel, usually the luxury, if I think for all of us, increasing luxury is time. You know, you, people don't have a month to go on a vacation. They have a week and they plan it out. They want everything to be perfect. So from the beginning to the end, I think the to make a long story short, that the human factor is increasingly important. So at the uh, Hotel uh, Montemolini, for example, we really we, we had, had the, the, the same staff for uh, quite a number of years, and they're a really good team, and they work well together. So they're, they're, they deliver a superior service. Uh, and we also use a lot of local treatments uh, from the, uh, uh, in terms of uh, cosmetics. I mean, it's all non-invasive. And uh, actually, I use them every day, and I'm, I'm 134 years oh, old. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> and Istak, what would you say, what is uh, that Slovenian spas could offer, and that is uh, 
on, you, you, one could find only there, not, let's say, in the neighborhood in Austria? Oh, there's so many things I would uh, need to stay here and talk for hours. Okay. But I, don't I mean, to, to, to get the, everybody asleep. To no, track the luxury was, segment. No, I was thinking on one case, maybe which is a little bit uh, still different. Uh, it's even in the Slovenian spa, let's say a resort or to mention one spa town. This is Rogashka Slatina. Mm -hmm. to, my, to some, it might be familiar. It's a spa resort actually, which has a unique healing drinking mineral water. It is the uh, mineral water with the highest quantity of magnesium. It's the world champion, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the only case in Slovenian past where the medical center is separated from the hotels. So actually, the clients book the hotel. They can choose between three, four, five stars. They can have an apartment. They're, 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 there's a lot of new apartments which have been bought by, by various, a lot of Russians, but a lot of others. A lot of, uh, there is actually a new five-star hotel that is, is uh, going to be built, but the people come to Rogashka because of the water. They don't consider staying in a far four, five-star. It's so important for them. And mm -hmm. in, in Rogashka, we had highest state officials from Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Russia. They, we don't even name them, as, mm -hmm. as you said. We keep mm -hmm. this privacy policy because they were the highest officials. Sometimes we were ever, uh, actually uh, surprised. Everybody was, or let's say, like 20, 30 people were standing up uh, in, in, the, in the restaurant and everybody was, what, what's going on? Mm -hmm. But later on, we found out, of course, some people knew that there is the highest uh, official, official from Azerbaijan at the same time, but they, they were so shocked that he's at the same time visiting and no, no, nobody knew. But they are coming for the purpose of curing themselves and going for the treatment of this gastroenterological problems, obviously the case mm -hmm. for this drinking mineral water. So I think this shows that uh, the uh, content is a, a little bit different. If you go for spa and spa treatments from this soft side, then luxury, uh, luxury is of course a very important and even more and more important role in certain cases. But in certain traditional spa uh, countries or offer it is the medical treatment for prevention but for and for cure as the highest priority and I, I consider this a luxury, uh, luxury that somebody can choose staying in a three-star facility but going for the treatment that he can afford that he can pay because he wants to go there because he knows he, it's, it, it's good for him of course we have adapted uh, to some uh, extent also in some hotels that we for example that has the so-called, we call it black water. It is a very rich water in uh, sediment. They were actually digging for uh, uh, um, uh, petrol and they found the thermal water, water, which is very ri <laughs> rich in sediment. It smells also a little bit. But we have also uh, put on a higher demand on the client so that you have this mineral water in your room. So you can, but you have to be careful because uh, there is a prescription of how many minutes you can use this uh, treatment in this uh, thermal water. And of course, whenever I come, present Slovenia on the Austrian uh, market, on the Hungarian market, uh, on the Czech, Slovak market, I always say we all have very uh, many similarities. The only advantage of Slovenia is we have also thalassotherapy, we, we, because we have this oh, okay. short part of the coast that Slovenia, uh, Croatia has in a large, in large scale, but still we, we always uh, emphasize this 46 kilometers is exactly 46 kilometers more than Austria has. Mm. And we put this strong effort that we also offer to So this, this is more some of our advantages that Hungarians cannot claim. Yeah. <laughs> Although we are very similar. Uh, I would argue <laughs> with that, but anyway. <laughs> do, do, you cannot do, offer to Do you know in, uh, in Qatar, what are, do, do they have like uh, any popular thermal spa destination in Europe? Well, in, in Europe at the moment for us, at least as at Gate to Wellness, uh, uh, the Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Is, yeah, yes. Czech Republic is is, is very popular. But uh, I'm, during this th these two days, I'm uh, talking to different people from different countries. So really, we can broaden the offers to our clients because there is a need, and people are always looking for something different. And I've, we've had lots of clients to asking me about different destinations in Europe. So 
So would you say a luxury segment would influence their decision rather to go, you know, to Austria or Slovenia or Romania? Uh, or when it, it comes to treatment, I think that the, usually people are looking for results. Results. Okay. Results comes first. If you can combine both, that would be wonderful, but results are always the first option they're looking for. And uh, that takes us back to the point that you were discussing about to offer something different. I think it's more than offering something different, is to offer whatever you have in a correct way. Mm -hmm. So work on your strength and really give everything the best you can because at the end of the day it is the experience. So people when they come, they can't expect you to create something new for them every time, but they do expect you to give them the best you can and to understand them as human beings and to understand their uh, culture and where they are coming from and why or how to handle them because we are all different in so many different ways that what maybe will upset you will be different from what will upset me yes. especially being an Arab woman I know how some females can get very easily or Arab females can very easily get offended without being meant to be offended it's just that the way we treat things or we look at things are differently. So if the staff in any of a uh, destination, either it's a wellness center, hospital, medical, understand what kind of person is coming before you ask them to come, then you will have a happier patient or clients yeah. in your hands and they will go back and they will be this excited leads, and come uh, back. leads us exactly to the next question and the question is you know to be connected and or not to be connected within a hotel so many people you know are looking forward to get rid of their mobiles or their computers but then you do have in the same premises others they just need to stay connected wherever wherever they go mm. so how do you deal with that in the newbies can i just quickly of flash course, back to what uh, our colleague was saying yeah. here very interesting we actually have mm -hmm. a lot of qatari guests coming to our mm -hmm. spa in Piastani. One of the advantages, we, this is in Slovakia, mm -hmm. and this is the spa where we're delivering about 3,000 treatments a day. And one of the reasons they go there is we can separate each treatment department by male and female. Mm -hmm. So that was just an interesting point. The other point I would like to add is the advantages that uh, countries like Slovenia and more so Hungary and Slovakia have in terms of offering their product is we can offer a very high quality if not luxury product mm -hmm. at a fraction of the price that you would pay here in Austria. Mm -hmm. For example, in our five-star spa in Slovakia, which is a secessionist building, it's absolutely beautiful with a, a secessionist dome over a mud pool, natural mud pool, you can get a doctor's appointment, four treatments a day, all-inclusive accommodation for about 175 euro per day. Oh, okay. That's what a massage would cost you in London. And you're getting yeah. four treatments plus doctor and so on. That's to good. answer your question about connectivity, um, it depends what product you're going to. Our guests are normally traveling often on their own where our spas are in quite remote, remote locations. They're going to be there three weeks. The first thing they want is their Facebook and their Skype so they can talk to their family. That's our type of spa product. If you're going to a yoga spa or a spiritual spa, you might want a technology detox or fast. So I do, I do think the connectivity issue is depending on which product you are going mm -hmm. to. Okay, because we did, I did have a personal experience at the Hotel Excelsior in, in Dubrovnik. We operate a spa over there. It didn't, they didn't cover spa area and the pool with the you know, wireless system, thinking, you know, who's going who's gonna to use it? And then, the, you know, the, the manager of the spa started to inform the hotel management, like we do have more and more demands. People do complain that they are not online. So finally they figured out that most of the people actually in that uh, this is like a very high-end hotel in, in Dubrovnik, they want to be connected even, even, you know, in the sauna. 
So they, they cover it now literally everything then. I think the non-connectivity issue is particularly related to spiritual spas, Ayurveda, mm -hmm. yoga spas. This would be applicable. How is in Maestra? Jets. Wi-Fi all the time. Covered 100%. <laughs> Almost in the pool. You're oh, yeah, that, that, while diving. <laughs> I just wanted to add on to what you were saying. That it, it's, it's great that you can offer uh, all these services at 175 euros. That's really impressive. Uh, we can't. <laughs> but well, this, is, this is we're not targeting the same. Uh, one of the reasons is guess. a lot of our treatments and these traditional treatments that you find in Central Europe, it's one therapist doing four or five people at the same time, like mud packs. Mm -hmm. So the one-on-one -on -one treatments, obviously these have a higher yeah, no, cost, but these are not the majority of our treatments. I was just going to say that the Arabic women, they can relax and then they come back and they can sit in the car and drive. <laughs> to go. So when we are talking about being connected, not being connected, checking your Facebook all the time, uh, how today the, the luxury segment is dealing with the transparency of social media? I've heard there are many high-end hotels these days. They, they, before they were answering any single complaint, you know, any single critics, any, 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 anything. And these days most of them are saying, anyhow, we're going to have always like 10% of complaints, so just let them, you know, write whatever they want. The new one's going to come with good critics and going to cover, you know, these, these old. So what do you do in Danubius? We answer everything. Answer everything. At the moment we do, yeah. Okay, and you, you find it better than the um, other way? This is what we do now, and we also have challenges where we have to manage. We're working in about seven different languages with our customer base, so we're having on Facebook to continually give out information in lots of different uh, languages. So it's a challenge, but this is what we do at the moment. Okay. And we nice also reply to everything. Yeah. Also reply to everything. I think the same as uh, with, with our spas, uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you also have TripAdvisor and um, you know, some channels like that where not answering to some of your complaints uh, can end uh, very nasty uh, to, to, to... It's yeah. actually amazing that, uh, if I can add on, that these people can afford themselves 10% of bad reviews, like, yeah, whatever. Yes, <laughs> Who, but they actually, actually... But this they, is crazy, they, 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 they because do, you really yes. can't, you can't do that. You have to manage mm -hmm. every one of those, because... That's, you know, that's what your guests expect and everybody is reading them right now. So. It, was, it was a part of like a conflict management theory, you know, that you have to answer straight away and, uh, and solve it basically Im immediately. And this is what luxury guests are expecting you to solve the issues, you know, as soon as possible. But sometimes uh, we do have a problem with the, with the staff members. In our case, I realized we did have super skillful people, like super skillful therapists coming from very good uh, schools, but not knowing how to communicate with the five guest uh, star. So we solved that by establishing our own academy, where we literally mm -hmm. teach them, you know, how to, how to behave, because they are perfect practitioners, but, you know, they don't know to communicate in a way. Did you face that problem as Absolutely, well? Absolutely, yeah. Yes. Um, on top of that, as I said, we're dealing in about seven different languages. So you've got the language problem, and we've inherited some cultures that, to put it very politely, are a little bit brutal in their communication skills. Um, we put a lot of effort into uh, training that tries to emphasize the positive, helpful energy that the uh, staff should give out. So we focus very much on that. Um, and also listening skills, listening to what the guest is feeling, not what the guest is saying. So that might be if you have a, a, a guest that's very, like me, a bit impatient and quick, and they want the information, the staff needs to speed up. Mm -hmm. If you have someone that's slow and pedantic, yeah. the staff need to go slower. And one thing I would find in our spas is the staff would be going at their speed and not the speed of the guests. So a lot of our training is, is about adjusting speed and listening to what the guests are feeling. Okay. 
And do you invest in, in Slovenian spas? Do they invest a lot into developing the communication, communication skills? I think what Mike brought up is also a nice challenge. You have so many nations in one hotel at one time. Even we have uh, guests uh, which don't go very well always together. We have a lot of groups from Israel at the same time. We get some guests from the Arab countries. So this is uh, quite a challenge uh, already in front of uh, staff at the reception at the restaurant because the habits are there different. We have the Russians, we have the Italians. You know, you, you can imagine the Italians mm -hmm. and the Russian. Everybody wants to be louder more than the other one. <laughs> so uh, the same happens he then uh, in the spa area. <laughs> <laughs> so there are a lot of uh, challenges uh, and uh, of course a guest coming from let's say 15, I, I put always a list of top 16 countries and we have much more than uh, in the recent years, we have the development also from the Chinese market and, and, and you can hardly expect that there will be all the languages spoken by a therapist but a guest wants to be spoiled even by the language. So. Well, he expects to be addressed in, in either Russian, of course, German, English, Italian, Spanish, French. Uh, uh, and, uh, so we, we sometimes uh, really uh, end up, okay, somebody can practice at least three, four, and this, this is the case. We have practitioners uh, who have to know three, four languages at least. First uh, uh, um, service that they have to deliver is either being a medical doctor and, and, and a therapist or on the therapist side and then the skill of all the languages besides uh, touching somebody on a massage or on any treatment which is a special of course uh, uh, case in approachment uh, what we actually do and deliver in the spa industry you know we actually touch somebody else with all his problems or trying to get all his problems uh, away with the treatment we, we uh, mm. do on him or her. Did you want to say something? I just no. want to say that at the end of the day, maybe I'm the consumer. For yeah. <laughs> I represent the consumer with you guys. And uh, I think at the end of the day, the consumer is always looking for uh, the experience to, to feel that uh, he's taken care of and that uh, it's the service is personalized. For example, I was with a friend of mine, we were in actually London in a hotel, and uh, uh, when we arrived, she brought her, it wasn't, she didn't plan to bring her child with her, but for whatever family reasons, she brought her child with her. So when we checked into the hotel, uh, and they saw that there, she does have a, I think he's six or seven years old, and uh, when she went up to her room, she came back down, and she was so happy, and she was telling me, Reem, you don't know what they did. He, they knew that my kid is coming with me, and as soon as we went up to the room, they, someone came into the room, knocked, and they gave him a teddy bear and a glass of milk and biscuits. That's it, as simple as that, a glass of milk and biscuits, and it made this kid so happy. And of course, the mother was so happy, it, and it's only because of a glass of milk and some biscuits, but it shows that you do care. Mm -hmm. And that's what is it all about, I think, at the end of the day. Very, very nice example. Mm -hmm. The reception works for us now. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, I, I, I just want to, yes, continue with the staff education, which is important. And actually, I learned a lot uh, following uh, MTA and their education and certification system. And then it was, uh, it was uh, funny in a way because we were recently invited along with some other wellness experts to, to come and visit one very high-end uh, uh, hotel uh, which uh, they wanted us to give our opinion on the, on the project claiming that is the, uh, the really like 100% wellness, wellness hotel. And so when we arrived there, a group of five of us, we told the management, this is what you think, but this is not what you deliver. And they were literally shocked because everyone was 100% sure that they are delivering wellness hotel. And that's, uh, that we are coming to, to the point where how basically I would like to know how do you implement uh, and integrate the wellness beyond spa and gym area. 
So how do you communicate wellness in, in your hotels, uh, Leo? Well, I, I, yesterday I tried to, uh, to strike a major point by, by uh, talking about Croatia, how it is a, a wellness destination because of the, the sea and uh, because of the unspoiled nature, because we don't have an industry. But um, basically to, to answer your question, and, and I think it really, uh, not to joke, but it goes along with what you said, you are the consumer. So uh, don't worry, they don't let me anywhere near the spa. <laughs> we have professionals for that, and the, the entire uh, staff in the hotel has to be trained uh, in a sense to, to, to relax uh, the guests, actually. We positioned the uh, Montemolini Hotel as a, a peaceful oasis of luxury, and that's how everybody acts in the hotel. There's no loud music, there are no parties. It has its own uh, beach and the beach has a beach bar. The beach bar doesn't work until very late. The music is very relaxed again. So I think that you have to really live, and like you said, you have to care, and the guests have to recognize that you care about them. I don't know if that answers the question. I hope it does. Uh, so you, everybody in the, in the hotel has to live the mission of the hotel, and then you are successful. If not, if just one person doesn't follow, and if it's the busboy, or if it's the concierge, or if it's the person in the wellness, then you, you fail, because the, these guests are really, really, really sensitive. Did I say really sensitive? Really sensitive. Really sensitive, <laughs> yes. And this is also the qu a question, um, uh, is uh, how, you know, how to attract a real wellness guest then once you deliver you know the whole service well once you communicate uh, wellness uh, well on, on you know on the, apart from the parking lot all the way to the to the room or apartment where he's staying how uh, to target and where ba basically is your 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 target market these days um, it's, it's actually for that particular let's say Montemolini hotel so this, you know, like I said, uh, like I said at the beginning, you know, that, that we try to not talk about who our guests are, where they come from, but mm -hmm. it actually just changed quite a bit. We used to have just guests who were from our region, so mm -hmm. mainly uh, uh, driving guests or uh, somebody who comes with their own private airplane. But it's now the the you could before we had a clear I could say these are our top ten markets, but now it's like that that the number of guests per market is shrinking. So we have maybe 25 countries mm -hmm. that are in the hotel. And the hotel has only 113 rooms. So it's very, very diverse. So I, I, t to be frank, I don't know how to answer your question. Maybe one of my colleagues can help me. <laughs> Do you know where, how you find your uh, wellness guests or somewhere that you target? You really we have, there is a statistic that basically 60% of real, like, uh, core wellness goers would book online. Is that true in your case, Danubius? For us, uh, regarding our spa guests, they are, I think, the same market as yourself. Mm -hmm. So seniors coming on treatments mm -hmm. for mobility okay. and musculoskeletal diseases. Um, the guests coming on wellness days, I would say, would book directly, directly mm -hmm. online. But they are more coming for the destination and throwing in some wellness treatments into the stay rather than for the wellness uh, package. Yeah. And Gate, Gate to Wellness does uh, provide an online booking as well? Uh, no, no. no. We, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, our service is all very personalized. So we okay. usually sit with the client and try to understand what he or she are looking for. Mm -hmm. What are the aims of their trip? What do they want to achieve? And uh, what kind of budget are they talking about? And so on. And accordingly, we give them some advice and we tell them about a few different options and then they can make up their mind. And from there, we take on the process, let's say, the, take care of the logistics. And what we try to do is to offer a full service. So we try to offer the service before they travel, during while they're away, we keep in touch and when they come back because when they come back we try to establish a database of uh, a nutritionist physiotherapist and so on based in Qatar so when they come back if they need any help to follow up 
Actually, can... this is exactly what I wanted to ask you yeah. about fo follow up because follow many people are going to ne neglect, you know, yeah. a, a guest once he, he no. left our premises. So you do have a follow up we, we, policy. We do, we do f uh, f offer the follow up service as well so we can help them. And we think of that as a service more than a money generating mm -hmm. part of the business. This is just a service so, to make them feel that they're special and we take care of them all the right way. It's not about, okay, we've booked you, goodbye, thank you very much, mm -hmm. we don't, you don't hear from us again. So we try to offer that. And uh, the other thing is, I mean, being or based in Qatar, which is part of the GCC and part of the Middle East, uh, the most important thing for that kind of client is trust. Mm -hmm. Trust, trust, trust. Because, uh, especially from the GCC, they felt that because of the money, that they were well known all over the world, that they're rich and they have money, mm -hmm. that they're sometimes been abused. Mm -hmm. They've been abused in hotels, by mm -hmm. doctors, by clinics, by hospitals, and they resent that. So as soon as they feel that you don't respect them or you're trying to abuse them, that's it, you're blacklisted, you're out of the, they, they don't like that. They want to be treated with uh, respect, they want to be treated with the, uh, what do you call it, the fair, so don't give me a, because I'm coming from the GCC, instead yes. of 50 euros, it's Double. suddenly 70 euros. Double. And, they, yeah, and they find that and they resent that. And that's the human thing. We all don't like that, but they've been objected to it. So now they are very weary of it. And they can be a little bit sometimes very sensitive till they find that, ah, yes, you are trustworthy and you're treating me with respect and you're not trying to take an advantage of me. And then things change and they trust you and they become loyal to you, but as soon as you try to play games around them, yeah. you're out. If I can add to the online uh, packages, we actually sell, I would say, more than 95% of our wellness services on site. We don't actually more sell than? almost anything online. More than? More than 95%. 95%. So basically people come and then it's very mm -hmm. personalized approach and that this is what they're after. You know, they don't want to book it at a certain time. Or, it was or uh, how, how come that, is, that uh, fact is totally against world statistics? So do you think the programs are, or packages are not well, you know, that w would combine like several treatments per day and the, the people would book upfront are not well communicated or you don't have the right selling channels? Uh, it could be either one of those things, but for, for Monta Millennial Hotel, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a clientele issue. Like, mm -hmm. They really want to be... Uh, left alone and choose at their own leisure. But again, at the other hotel, that, that's a five-star, we have the Hotel Lone, there we, ha we see a completely different situation where we are successful in selling uh, online packages or putting together different uh, variety of weekend packages with different kinds of services within them. But in, in Montebolini, it's very uh, personalized approach. But did you did you ever consider having like a wellness concierge service that would you know call them and approach them before they arrival and consult them like or um, no, no not I yet. don't think so usually usually we work with uh, agencies so similar as yours we, we don't work with you not yet uh, but we work with other agencies that we really uh, sometimes uh, facilitators or agents or our travel agencies they're very sensitive about their guests so we cannot afford to lose a partner so we actually rely on our uh, partners to tell us what their guests uh, want and need and they actually know it better than we do especially on not on these are people who are we haven't met yet they're coming to our hotel so we rely on our partners who are familiar with our property and what we offer and how do we offer it to to match the 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 right clients for the hotel. So we actually because rely a lot on our partners. Because me personally experience in many cases around the world from, I don't know, Bath, UK, or Las Vegas, or uh, even Terme de Monte Carlo and so on, if you wait to go there, you won't be able to book anything. <laughs> you know, you have to book far uh, upfront, up front so too. at least, you know, a week before your arrival, if not more than that. And then uh, that, that, that's why, you know, I'm really 
curious wh why. You I know. think you can't compare mm -hmm. definitely spas like ours with Western European or international wellness spas. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons is because the guest only knows what treatments they're going to have after they've been to the doctor and had the medical exam checkup. And medical checkup. Mm -hmm. And so we're really expert about um, coordinating our staff and mm -hmm. our resources to provide what is needed on the spur of the moment. So it's the traditional medical spas versus the new, let's say, wellness yeah, spas, more or less. And you can't, you can never compare the two products, otherwise, you know, statistically yeah, yeah, sure, sure. and product-wise. Uh, and, yeah. yeah. and how about the, the, your, your guests? Do they book upfront their treatments when they travel well, abroad? Again, it depends. It depends, it depends where on, they go. It depends on where they, well, what mm -hmm. are they looking for, and it depends on the, the wellness center or the spa they're mm -hmm. going to and how they work. But if, obviously, if it comes to medical or mm -hmm. if there's any medical situation, then check when they yes, when they arrive and they see them and their checkup is done, then they will uh, mm -hmm. book it accordingly. But in the same time, what we do is, uh, for example, next week, I'm traveling with a group of ladies to India. Mm -hmm. So we do groups booking for only a very small group, 10 ladies. We, and uh, women only, and we organize everything for them. We take care of all the details and all the bookings, and we travel. I travel with them, and I, to make sure that everything is taken care of. And in that case, let's say in India, they're going for detox or Ayurveda. It's already been arranged, so we know that yes, five people are going for detox, seven are doing this. So all of that is done previous. Mm -hmm. But as soon as its medical case comes in, then. It depends on the checkup and what mm -hmm. the doctors will say. Okay, well, we open so many topics, different. We do have so many experts here, so I believe you're going to use the opportunity and to have some, you're going to have some questions. Anyone? Yes. Do we have a mic? Yeah. Coming. It's coming. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Uh, there's one comment on uh, re regard to the co uh, responding to the complaints uh, for the customer or client. Some uh, five-star hotels actually they have a KPI, which is a key performance indicators that they should actually respond within 24 hours. You know, there's some of that. This is one comment. The other one I was going to mention is about uh, the rehabilitation center. Because now, with the new trend, uh, what we have now, especially in the GCC, uh, people are really differing now from the, uh, the, the standard medicine. And they're going for alternative type of uh, treatment, which is called alternative medicine. And rehabilitation uh, through these spas is one of the actually uh, looking for now. And it's, it's really growing on demand now. That's what I've seen it from many people actually in Bahrain and the surrounding country. They are asking for this type of treatment because now most of the people are actually beginning to be deferred on going for a standard regular treatment because they know that's going to be a, a chronic and they have to be just on one medication for a long time. And so there's a new trend coming now that people are actually asking and looking for alternative medicine, which I feel there will be a, a good market for these guys. Thank you. Sorry, can I just uh, jump in with a couple of things there? Interesting you use the word alternative medicine because uh, our doctors don't think it's alternative at all. They think it's classical medicine. <laughs> it's, ju it's just um, uh, done in a, in a natural sort of way. And there was another point about responding to um, complaints quickly. We've just introduced into all of our spas these touch, touch screens. Mm -hmm. So now immediately, if there's any problem in the, in the treatments, we can see it straight away, and then the spa directors can go in there and sort out the problems. More questions? Well, uh, did you want to add something more? Share an experience, Sistok? Yeah, you I, I, I just it crossed my mind when yeah. you, you when you were asking about training staff and mm -hmm. experience uh, to the clients and how how to get the clients back. We have an excellent experience in a house ritual, mm -hmm. which one spa actually by one medical doctor in the spa designed first for uh, their staff, 
So actually, every, everybody twice a day started to practice this, uh, uh, they call it house ritual. Mm -hmm. it, there are some exercises to relax themselves, to get into yourself, inside, be myself, deliver from myself to the others. And I know very well that we have uh, one CEO from uh, a sister company who is also in the same chain of uh, mm -hmm. Olimia Hotel in uh, Pocetertek and mm -hmm. uh, Terme Tuchel in Croatia, yeah. the same owner. And they do it, uh, and they started it by them all, uh, by themselves, and they transformed it to the clients. Now everybody is doing it, the employees and the clients. And that's uh, the, the example. They want to train the, the clients when they come home to remember this uh, extremely uh, interesting experience they had, but also to learn them to practice this until their next visit to the same spot. At home, right. <laughs> no, at home to practice, mm -hmm. and when they start losing their practice, they have to go back to the spot to learn it back again. Mm -hmm. So this is so one of the way how to get the clients always back and back. Great follow-up, I mean. That's a yeah. wonderful example, yes. and it really works. You can, you are astonished, mm -hmm. you, you, you see suddenly on a TV, which is everywhere, people start to practice in, and everybody starts eventually to, to, to participate. And that, that's, I believe it's a, it's a great, a really great experience. And we share it for, for free with you. <laughs> <laughs> good, very Thank good. You. That's why, why we are here, you know, to network <laughs> and to share ex our experiences. I wanted to say something for, for the end, and then mm -hmm. there's a saying in Croatia, uh, it's that a healthy person has many wishes and a sick person has just one. One, yes. to feel better. So <laughs> That's true. Uh, thank you for uh, everything that I've learned. I'm, I'm a novice to health tourism industry and uh, it feels really good to know that there are so many experts out there that you're actually doing something not just uh, business-wise that makes sense but rather also something noble. Thank you very much for, for coming and participating. You were great guests and see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.